Chapter 2 My son, if you will receive my words, and lay up my commandments with you, so that you make your ear attend unto wisdom, and your heart incline to discernment. Yes, if you call for understanding, and lift up your voice for discernment, if you seek her as silver, and search for her as for hid treasures, then shall you understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and discernment. He lays up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to them that walk in integrity, that he may guard the paths of justice and preserve the way of his godly ones. Then shall you understand righteousness and justice and equity, yes, every good path. For wisdom shall enter into your heart, and knowledge shall be pleasant unto your soul. Discretion shall watch over you. Discernment shall guard you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the men that speak fraudward things, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of evil, who are crooked in their ways and perverse in their paths, to deliver you from the strange woman, even from the alien woman that maketh smooth words, that forsake the Lord of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down unto death, and her paths unto the shades. None that go unto her return, neither do they attain unto the paths of life. That you mayest walk in the way of good men, and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the wholehearted shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the land, and the faithless shall be plucked up out of it. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. We are continue. We are continuing in the proverbs, these sayings of Solomon, these writings, these uh, teachings. Even uh, this open letter to from a, a father to a son, a little good advice, some instructions for those that are coming up. We're going to pick it up here in verse one, my son. If you will receive my words and lay up my commandments with you, my son, uh, those that come forth from me, my my children, uh, these are just simply those ones that are born from me, uh, who have, have come to life, those that will receive my words, those that will lay up my commandments with, with them. And these commandments are simple, that we do what the Lord has asked us to do. It's a simple thing. Uh, It was given to me. It's given to to the children. Uh, We teach our children. And this is what we get from that. And this is a a letter to those that will listen, those that will do, those that are being warned of what's coming. And we're going to get that too. So that you make your ear attend unto wisdom and your heart inclined to discernment. So, so that you will make your ear attend unto wisdom. You will listen uh, to the, the good words, and your heart will incline to discernment. And this is what teaches you right from wrong, your ability to know the difference in the words, uh, these words that we hear, this understanding we get. Uh, we have to be able to tell the difference in the, uh, the, the words of this flatterer, and the words of somebody who's trying to help you for if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures if you will seek her as silver silver is something that's passed through the fire and it's been purified it's it um uh, and it's and search for her as these hid treasures just like uh, a great wealth that we don't know about and her once again, is this wisdom, this is knowledge, this is understanding, and it comes from the law of the Lord. Uh, look for her, seek for her. This is the greatest thing in life, uh, uh, and we should look for it like we're looking for treasures that are hidden, looking for treasures of silver, these, these beautiful things. Five, then shall you understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Then you'll understand the fear of the Lord, the reverence of Hashem, respect and you'll find this knowledge of God because we'll find out he's the one to give it in the beginning it come from him it's for your own good uh, these things that are right these things that, that that when you choose to do the correct thing see you choose the good out of the bad six 
For the Lord gives wisdom, and out of his mouth comes knowledge and discernment. For the Lord, Hashem, that's that name, that, that holy name, he's the one that gives wisdom. It comes from him. It comes from, and he speaks right to your heart. It comes out of his mouth, out of that which he pours out, comes this knowledge and discernment. And we'll find out, it, it, and we have the law to remind us of that, to give us that, that reminder uh, so that when we hear it, we remember he is the Lord. Seven, he lays up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to them that walk in integrity, and he does lay up sound wisdom. Wisdom is great knowledge. It's understanding. It's the ability to apply what you know into your life. And he gives it to the upright. He gives it to those that walk correctly, those that, that do the correct thing, that choose that correct path. He is a shield or protector to them that walk in integrity. He is the, he's a shield. He's their protector. He's the, he's, he is that presence before them that comes with the law, that respect, that fear they have of the Lord. Eight, that he may guard the paths of justice and preserve the way of his godly ones. And this is why he does it. He guards the paths of justice. He guards the paths of justice, these things that are just. Man doesn't decide what's just. The Lord does. And he preserves the way of his godly ones. He preserves the way of those that do what he asks. That's what that is. These lawful ones, these ones who stand before him, priests, if you want to look at it that way, they stand before him with the ability to do what he's asked. Nine, then shall you understand righteousness and justice and equity. Yes, every good path. Then would you understand righteousness and justice. You'd understand what's correct, what's just, what's equal. Yes, you would understand every good path if you will seek after the law, if you will seek after the Lord and his understanding, which he give you. He speaks to each and every one of us in our own heart. Ten, for wisdom shall enter into your heart, and knowledge shall be pleasant unto your soul. And this wisdom will enter into your heart, right into the fabric of your being, and, and this knowledge, this understanding of the law shall be pleasant unto your soul. It, because that's what your soul seeks. It's, it's, it wants the good experience in life. It doesn't want the bad experience in life. And the, and the Lord and his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding, he gives you for your own good is just that which your soul seeks. Eleven, discretion shall watch over you and discernment shall guard you. Discretion, um, uh, discretion is the ability to be able to tell uh, right and wrong. The word here is metzama, and it's the, your, even your purpose. You'll have a purpose in life. Uh, you'll have, and this this is what watches over you because you're not going to be taken by these things. And your your intelligence and your understanding is what guards you because the Lord has given it to you. He has supplied you with it because you do these things, and this is how we attain it. This is how we receive it. Twelve, and it's to deliver you from the way of evil, from the men that speak forward things, to deliver you, uh, to, to save you from this way, from these wicked ways, these evil ways of these men that speak forward things or these perverse things. And it doesn't have to be with an evil mouth. Most of the time it's done with a very pleasant, wonderful tongue, a just like something sweet. Um, and it's like a lure a lure in a trap, 13, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. And they leave these paths of uprightness, these paths of correctness, and they walk in these ways of darkness. Evilness, because in their own mind it's all for gain. They've got nothing in it, 14, uh, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of evil, oh, because they rejoice to do evil. They are happy to do these evil, wicked things, and they delight in the frowardness or this perverseness of evil. These things that are wrong, um, a lot of them don't even know the difference. They're taught that this is, this is okay, this is acceptable in this society. 
but it's not acceptable to the Lord. 15. Who are crooked in their ways and perverse in their paths. These ones that are crooked in their ways, they're not doing the right thing. They're not doing the correct thing. They're perverse in their paths, they're, and they're, they're twisted. They're, they're crooked. They're bent. They're bowed in their paths. They're wrong is basically what it means. Uh, your own heart tells you so, 16, to deliver you from the strange woman, even from the alien woman that makes smooth her words. And it's also to deliver you from the strange woman, even this alien woman, this foreign woman. A woman is something from man. Woman literally means from man. And we're talking about this strange foreign thing from man that makes smooth her words. And we're going to use it like a metaphor. Sure, everybody knows we're talking about this lady of the night we should put it that way in this context it's that's literal but what we're really talking about are these ones who use the beauty to use the beauty of these these pleasant teachings to like i have said before lure you away from the understanding the lord gives you in your heart 17 that forsake the lord of her youth and forget the covenant of her god because she forsakes the Lord of her youth. This Lord here, the word is Aleph. Aleph, just like the first letter of the Aleph, Bet. We have Aleph. Aleph means teacher. Teacher of her youth. When she was young, God spoke to her heart just like he did the rest of us. And she forgot this covenant of her God. She forgot that she was going to be the best person she could be. And this is all a metaphor. She has went away. She has estranged herself from this covenant or this agreement between her and her God. And we'll find out the, this is because, uh, 18, for her house sinks down into death and her paths into the shades. Her house, her dwelling place is going down to death. The place of the dead, the place of the dead, this realm of the dead, this death itself, her paths unto the shades. Her paths, her ways are leading to this, this, uh, to death. To uh, this that is dead. And not literally, not literally dead. She's not dead, but this, this is the understanding we get from these, from the teaching is that this, this death is, is a death of spirit. It's a death of your understanding. It's a death of your covenant. It's a death of, of you, the one who was born in the beginning, 19, that none that go unto her return, neither do they attain unto the paths of life. None that go to her return, none that, that take part in that, none that go, and, and this is to condone it, take part in it, have no understanding of it, and be relinquished unto the, uh, the joining in to this. They can't attain unto these paths of life. It, they're not there. See, that's the, a realm of death. That's a realm of darkness. And once you go into there, there are no paths of life except the one you entered on. And that's where you would have to return by. You transgressed the law of God. You transgressed his rules and his orders. And you would have to come back through that same path by repenting of your sin, by saying you're sorry, and returning along that path 20 that you may walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous and that's what it would be for that you would be able to walk in this way of good men and and keep the path of righteous keep the paths of goodness keep these paths these ways that go to what's correct and if because if you don't what's going to become of them nobody's going to travel them the weeds grow up along them. There's no more path there. No one knows it. No one sees it. It's not available. And this is when we find out the, as society we, we begin to accept that which is wrong. Uh, saying, well, yeah, it, it's okay. Well, it, it, it's not okay. 21. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the wholehearted shall remain in it. For the upright... They shall dwell in the land. They shall live here. 
these wholehearted ones, the wholehearted, those that do what the Lord has asked, shall remain. 22. But the wicked shall be cut off from the land, and the faithless shall be plucked up out of it. But the wicked, these, these ones that don't think you have to, these ones that consider, hey, it's okay, you can do these things. No. The Lord said, no, you can't. He was talking to you directly. Yes. He said, no, they'll be cut off. They, they don't think they are. They don't think they're dead. The Lord said you're dead. The Lord said you're cut off. These faithless, these ones that don't have, they don't think you can do it. They don't think it can be done. These have no faith. And we'll find out. The Lord gives us our faith. The Lord give us the law. He said, now do it. He wouldn't have said do it if it couldn't be done. All right. We're going to move forward to Proverbs 3. Turn and return. <laughs> 